How would a nuclear blast affect the human body? There are a few variables to cover before we get into this. Size of bomb, distance from bomb, surrounding environment, and altitude of the bomb. For this video, we will cover multiple distances, assume a flat, empty environment devoid of buildings or barriers, and we'll have the bomb detonate on the ground. This will become important later, and I'll explain why when it's applicable. As for size, this is a bit trickier. Nuclear weapons come in a very wide range of detonation yields, some as small as less than one kiloton to tens of megatons. The bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki had yields of around 15 kilotons and 20 kilotons, respectively. For the sake of this video, we'll use a basic modern strategic bomb with a yield of 100 kilotons. Bombs under 50 kilotons are generally viewed as tactical nuclear weapons. Immediately following detonation, the fireball grows to a radius of 500 meters, or 1,640 feet. The area within the fireball briefly reaches millions of degrees, tapering off to thousands of degrees after a few seconds. The fireball is briefly hotter than the core of the sun. For a person standing right by the bomb, the result is what you'd expect. The thermal energy is enough to dissociate the matter within their body, joining the expanding ball of plasma. This is commonly referred to as being vaporized. The effect is faster than the speed of neural impulses within the brain, meaning our unfortunate subject would be converted to vapor so fast, they would not be able to even begin to form a thought. I'm going to pause here for a moment and bring back bomb height because this is important. It's a common misconception that people in Hiroshima directly under the bomb were vaporized, however it's actually very unlikely that anyone was. The Little Boy bomb was 15 kilotons, making its vaporization radius smaller, likely only around 50 meters or so. The bomb was detonated at 457 meters, or 1,500 feet. Detonating the bomb above the ground increased the destructive radius and power of the blast wave, but kept the actual fireball further away. Meaning, no one was actually close enough to the bomb to be properly vaporized. Let's return to our thought experiment bomb. Moving outside the vaporization radius at around 1 kilometer, or 0.6 miles. At this distance, temperature still reaches thousands of degrees. A person standing here would find their body and everything on it suddenly charred within an instant. The blast almost immediately after pulverizing the charred body into ash as it continues to burn. This would all happen within a couple seconds, and is functionally the same as vaporization, however the correct term is carbonization. From the fireball out to this radius, we also start to see the effect known as nuclear shadows. This effect stretches out as far as the intense thermal pulse. On surfaces like concrete that survive the blast, anything between it and the bomb will have a shadow from that object burned into the surface. This effect has been well documented after nuclear detonations. Fences, posts, objects on the ground, and even shadows of footprints and one left by a person sitting on a step. Moving out to 2 kilometers, or 1.5 miles from the blast, anyone shielded from the blast will receive a lethal dose of radiation. Those in the open would be largely carbonized and mechanically destroyed by the shockwave. Moving out to 4 kilometers, or 2.4 miles, the thermal pulse will immediately produce third-degree burns on exposed skin, clothing will burn off and blindness will be immediate. Within seconds, the blast will arrive, causing concussive damage and tossing them off their feet. At this radius, this all happens slow enough thoughts can be made, but it would be largely painless as the burns would destroy all the nerve cells under the skin. Moving out to 5 kilometers, blindness can occur if facing the bomb. Clothing would start to burn, and second degree burns can be expected. This would be very painful as the nerves survive, but the outer layers of skin does not. The pressure wave would arrive shortly after, likely bursting eardrums and pushing them off their feet to the ground. Flying debris would also pose a threat. Out to 7 kilometers, or 4.3 miles, the flash would be very bright and the heat would be felt. First degree burns are to be expected like a very bad sudden sunburn. Plastic fabrics might soften and melt a little, but not burn in the same way. If hands were used to cover eyes, the brightness of the flash would be strong enough to see the bones through the skin. If one person was standing behind another, the person in the back would be able to see the other person's bones in their arms and hands for a brief moment. 
This isn't because of x-rays, it's just due to the light being so intensely bright. We also know this effect happens, as many people who witness nuclear detonations have reported them. Moving out to 9 kilometers, or 5.5 miles, the bright flash could cause temporary blindness and the flash would feel warm on the skin, but no burning would occur. The mushroom cloud would be seen silently rising into the air for about 20 seconds until the shockwave arrives. It would feel like a sudden sharp gust of wind and a loud bang, possibly causing hearing pain. These are the immediate effects of the bomb. As we know, nuclear weapons don't stop causing problems after the detonation. Now, the fallout takes over. Nuclear fallout is pulverized dust, water, and ash that have been made radioactive from neutron activation or embedded with nuclear material. Metals, rocks, and other materials can capture neutrons, making them radioactive. Pulverized neutron activated materials can embed into other materials, making them radioactive as well. Isotopes created by the detonation also mix with vaporized dust and ash being pulled into the air. Most of the fallout is short-lived, highly radioactive materials which decay after a few days, leaving the less radioactive, longer-lived isotopes behind. This is why after nuclear attack, it's recommended that people get underground and stay for a minimum of 24 hours, with many recommending 48-hour minimums. The longer you stay inside, the less radioactive the fallout will be once you leave. But what happens without shelter? Within hours of the detonation, the dust will start to fall from the sky downwind. Rain may also form from particulate matter and smoke in the air. There will be raging fires after the blast, so let's go out 10 kilometers away to avoid the fires and just focus on the radiation. There are different kinds of radiation, particle and electromagnetic. With fallout, there will be a lot of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, with the initial detonation producing x-ray and neutron radiation within the fireball. Alpha radiation is unable to penetrate human skin. Beta radiation will be stopped by muscle tissue. The primary ambient danger is from the gamma radiation. The alpha and beta radiation become dangerous as dust is inhaled or contaminated water is consumed. Alpha radiation has low penetration, but is highly damaging inside the body. As the fallout rains down, the dust is inhaled, the ground is covered in highly radioactive ash as they walk. In this way, the radiation exposure is happening from outside and inside the body simultaneously. Ionizing radiation destroys molecular bonds, proteins and DNA are damaged. This leads to tissue death and cell damage that gets worse with prolonged exposure. The immune system can be destroyed with high enough doses, meaning on top of radiation poisoning and burns, massive infection will set in. For lower but still fatal doses, the condition will deteriorate over the span of days, with tissue starting to die and skin starting to blister. Eventually, the organs shut down and death follows. The effects of this kind of exposure is rather horrific, and I don't want to go into detail or show pictures. Recounting the real agonizing deaths of people for entertainment feels wrong, and I will not take part. For non-lethal doses, radiation sickness will onset and gradually recover with time. Scarring will likely be present depending on the severity, and the chances of developing cancer later in life will have increased. Nuclear weapons were originally made and used for one thing, pure absolute horror. I want to leave off with a thought to the victims of nuclear weapons, those in both Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, those exposed to radiation during tests in many countries, those who lost their homes and cultural identities due to nuclear testing in the Pacific, and even those who suffered mental distress throughout the Cold War due to the threat of their use. I will leave links in the description to the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, the Hiroshima Peace Culture Foundation, and Mayors for Peace. I don't want this video to make anyone more afraid, it's just the facts of a horrible weapon. There is always hope for the future, and progress is always being made. Sensationalism is used to farm engagement online, which is why online media isn't always a reliable gauge for nuclear threats. Headlines try to scare you for clicks, and often overhype and distort nuclear-related threats and events just for that purpose. If World War III is trending on Twitter, you can pretty much guarantee someone made an empty threat with no actual follow-through, and both news and social media is hyping it up for engagement. Thank you for watching. Now go do something to make yourself smile. Self-care is important.